Hello scientists, this is Miss R and we're going to do lab 9.03 on electric circuits today. Part 1 of the lab, understanding voltage, current, and resistance, you can do on YouTube. Um, I'll let you watch the YouTube video and answer these first 13 questions based on the YouTube video. That's a really important part of the lab, so please don't skip it. You can pause me and go work on that YouTube video. Now we can start part two, observing voltage relationships. We're going to work in uh, the FET website again. You're going to have to download a piece of software. Mac users, you're going to have to um, go to your downloads and uh, right click, or I think that's control click on a Mac, uh, to get the program to run. So let's go and let's look at three different batteries. Um, we're going to give each battery a different voltage, and I'll show you how to do that. And then we're going to measure the voltage of each battery. I'll show you how to do that. And then we're going to record all of our answers here in this table. So here we've got one battery. I'll pull that out over from there. If you right-click on the battery or Control-click, you can change the voltage. Um, they all start out at 9 volts. Just to make this clearer, I'm going to make the three batteries 5 volts, 10 volts, and 15 volts. So I'm done here. That one's going to be 5 volts. We can get a voltmeter just by clicking here. It'll appear. We can bring it down here and put the probes here on the ends of the batteries, just like you would connect a battery up to an electrical device. And there we go. It's got 5 volts. We have confirmed that it indeed has 5 volts. All right, let's get another battery going here. Let's make this one 10 volts. We'll check and make sure that it all worked out okay by measuring the volts of battery number 2. There we go. Now let's do battery number three. I'm going to right click, change the voltage to 15. I'll measure that voltage using our voltmeter here. Yep, it says 15. All right. Now we know that the voltage of battery 1 is 5, battery 2 is 10, and battery 3 is 15. How about if we put battery 1 and battery 2 together? What's the total voltage? Let's measure that. Oh, that makes sense. This is 5, this is 10, 5 plus 10 is 15. Oops, I just want to move this, not swing it around. Let's me measure all three batteries together. And that makes sense. 5 plus 10 is 15, and 15 plus another 15 is 30. So now you've got everything you need to fill out this table one here and answer the questions in part two. Now let's work on table two. What could you vary to test your description about the relationship? Right click on the batteries to change characteristics. Run several tests according to your data. Well, I'll run a couple tests for you. Let's change the characteristic of this battery and we'll go down to one. You can make a prediction for what's going to happen. And we'll hit play here. And you notice this dropped to 26 volts. If you've noticed that something hasn't changed, you probably have to press play down here. 
we dropped this battery to one volt and you can see this total voltage came down by four volts. We went from five to one and this came down. All right, let's just experiment with two batteries. In order to break up the batteries, I'm gonna right click and it'll say split junction. I'm gonna do that the same here. We'll move that one over there. Now let's change voltage on this battery number two. Let's make this one, instead of 10 volts, let's make it 20 volts. And remember this one's 15. So what's 20 plus 15? Let's see if our hypothesis that 20 plus 15 equals 35. Oh, there we go. All right, we'll do one more experiment here. Pause this, change change the voltage here from 15, let's go to 30. It's not very realistic because dry cell batteries really don't have 30 volts, but just for crazies. So now let's, if we have 20 plus 30 and we hit play, we should have 50. So now you have some of what you need to answer Uh, question 15 and fill out table 2. Let's go to part 3 here using voltage. We're going to use the circuit construction kit again to build a circuit with a battery and a life light bulb in the lifelike visual mode. We're already in that mode. So um, we need to think about how does the voltage of the battery compare with the light bulb's voltage? And vary the voltage of the battery and write observations about the brightness of the bulb. Think about a real light bulb and battery and explain what you think is happening that causes the changes in brightness. All right, let's go back to our circuit construction kit. Let's build a circuit and we, you can take a screenshot or you can draw what your circuit looks like and then we'll play around with voltage and brightness. So we can conveniently reset everything here. We can get out a light bulb, get out a battery. <clears throat> we can grab some wires and connect the bulb to the battery. Sometimes the wires are a little bit squirrely. We can hit play. Oh, and look, it's shining brightly. These little blue dots represent electrons, uh, just in case you were wondering. All right, let's change the voltage here. Remember, they all start out at nine. Let's go down to four. Let's go down to five. Let's see if we notice anything different. Let's hit play again. Ooh, not so bright. Let's change it again and make it lots brighter. Let's change it to 20. There should be a definitely a noticeable difference here. Remember to hit play if you want something to, if you've changed something. Wow, that's much brighter. Notice what's happening um, to the, the electrons here. Notice how fast they're going. Let's hit pause here and turn it, turn the voltage down and see if the pace is the same. Seems like these electrons are moving a little bit slower when we have a lower voltage. So let's go back to our lab questions. We varied the voltage of the battery, write observations about the brightness. Think about a real light bulb and battery and explain what you think is happening that causes the changes in brightness. If you have more voltage, you have more potential to push electrons. And if you push more electrons, you're probably going to get more energy in the bulb. And if you have more energy, you're gonna have more uh, light energy being produced. More electrical energy is being put through the bulb. 
you're going to have more light energy produced. So part four, using voltage in a series circuit. We're going to use the circuit construction kit. That's what CKK stands for, uh, the simulation we've been using so far. We're going to build three circuits. We can use the one we just built as the first one. Um, we're going to use a battery with 12 volts and just whatever light bulbs they have. We're going to turn on the voltmeter, which we already have out, and the ammeter, I'll show you where that is, to measure the voltage of the battery and the current into it. So we can do that with the very first battery, um, the first circuit, and then we'll build these two circuits as well. And you'll be filling out table three here with the battery voltage, the current, and the brightness of the bulbs. So here we go for part three. We need, I like using the non-contact ammeter. That's to measure current. And, oh, it's behind me here. Let's hit play <coughs> so we get some current moving. Oh, we have to change our battery to 12, so remember to right click, change the voltage, and the lab requests that you use a 12 volt battery. So let's hit play again so we get our electrons moving. Let's measure the number of amps. Pretty much anywhere in the circuit, it seems like, there's 1.2 amps. So you need to write that down in your table. Here's the voltage of the battery. Here is the voltage of the bulb. 11.99, pretty darn close to the voltage of the battery. <coughs> okay, here's a series circuit with two light bulbs. And remember, um, if you want to split a junction or if you want to unhook a wire, you just right click and it'll say split junction. I don't want to do that right now. Let's look at the brightness of the bulbs here and let's look at the current. If we have two bulbs going with one battery, are they as bright as they were with one? We can actually build a reference circuit here quickly. Remember to change your voltage. We'll just hook it up and we'll look at the brightness and so we can compare. Oops, I accidentally hooked that up. I'm gonna do that. So this is one bulb, this is two bulbs. Let's look at the current. Remember it was 1.2 here, it's 0.6 here. Let's check the voltage of the bulbs here. Sometimes it's tricky to get this lined up just right. It's definitely not zero. So this first bulb here is six volts. Let's go measure the other one. And that one's six volts too. So the battery, remember, is 12 volts. We're not gonna change it, I just wanted to show it to you. So this is 12 volts, and each of these light bulbs are six volts, and comparing their brightness here to just one battery, which is getting 12 volts, the brightness is not quite the same. What do you think is gonna happen when we hook up three light bulbs to the same battery? Let's compare here. This time you just want to pull out three light bulbs. Drop a couple pieces of wire between them. Actually it's probably easier to do this. The 
the red circles there are kind of, they're showing you the two places you can click a wire. And it's easier to kind of go top bottom when you're hooking things up like this. Okay, we want to make our battery. We'll change the voltage to 12. Oops, yeah, that's the place I want it. All right, so notice here's one bulb and one battery. Here's two bulbs, one battery. Here's three bulbs, one battery. Notice the brightness here and the brightness here. You're going to be wanting to write that down in the table for part three. Now let's go measure the voltage of these bulbs. That's four volts. That's four volts. And that's four volts too. So the, remember the battery is 12 volts and each of the three light bulbs is four volts. So what happens when you put three light bulbs in, what happens to the voltage at each light bulb when you have more than one? It's six and six here, and it's four, four, four here, so you might be able to do some math and figure out what's going on there mathematically to the voltage when you connect more than one light bulb to a battery. So at this point, you should be able to fill out all of table three. We built these three circuits. The squiggly thing here is the light bulb. We, then we did two light bulbs and then we did three light bulbs. So we want to summarize any relationships we've observed and explain what you think is happening. Test to see if changing the battery voltage causes you to modify any of your conclusions. So I'll go change the battery voltage for you and we'll um, see what happens. Um, and then we'll also see what happens when we take a wire out. So using the three, bat three bulb circuit might um, give us some interesting ideas about what's going to happen. Let's change the voltage to 15 and then see what happens at each bulb. Remember last time when it was 12, when the battery was a 12 volt battery, each light bulb was four. Now it's 15. Oh, and that one's five. And that one's five. And that one's five as well. Remember the battery here is 15 volts. So let's see what happens when we change a two bulb circuit to 15 volts. seven and a half and seven and a half. So hopefully you can draw some conclusions there. Um, there's a question in this part of the lab that asks what happens if you hook up the voltmeter backwards. And you can see that it tells you the current is going in the other direction. And there's the ammeter, just we're using the ammeter in different ways. Okay, if we remove a, uh, a wire here, what happens? What happens to the bulbs here? It's like those strings of Christmas lights when one bulb goes out. You know, they all go out. So now we're going to use voltage in parallel circuits. Um, the first circuit will look the same. Here's our uh, bulb, here's our battery. 
But what gets interesting in parallel circuits is when we build uh, the circuit in figure five and figure six, when we have two bulbs, each has their own complete circuit here. And when we have three bulbs, each of the three bulbs has their own complete circuit. And so things behave a little bit differently when you're working with parallel circuits. And I'll show you how to build those parallel circuits. So here we have the first uh, setup. And it doesn't, this setup with one bulb is kind of the same as whether it's series or parallel. We can measure the voltage, the battery, we can measure the voltage, the light bulb. It's going to be the same. We can measure, and we'll measure the current as well here. 1.2 in the whole thing. So now I've kind of taken apart the uh, series circuit we had going. I have two light bulbs kind of with their wires connected this way. Um, just to make it look exactly like the circuit diagram, we will connect it this way. We, so we kind of make some rectangles here. So it looks just like the circuit diagram. I'll do the same with the battery. I'll give it a couple of sort of arms here. So it looks just like the circuit diagram. In real life, you don't have to make these arms to make it a parallel circuit. And there we go. So this is a 12 volt battery again, because we're using the same battery we did. Oop, we changed that to 15, let's back to 12. Okay, so now we have this parallel circuit. We wanna test the voltage in this parallel circuit with two bulbs. Battery indeed is 12. Let's check the bulbs. Oh, look at that. The bulb is 11.99. The same as it was in a series circuit. Same with this bulb. So remember I said things are a little bit different when you have a parallel circuit. The voltage is going to be a uh, they're not going to split the voltage like they did in a series circuit. Both these bulbs are going to have the same, almost the same voltage as the battery. Let's check the current. 2.4, 2 2.4, 2.2, 1.2, 2.4. So it looks like anywhere in this kind of bottom part of the circuit, it's 2.4. When you get up to this first light bulb, it's 1.2, and it's the same for the second light bulb. So you kind of, when you get to about here, you split the amps that's, that's in this part of the circuit, you split those amps between the two bulbs here. So, so far for part five here, we've built this circuit, which was the same as uh, the first circuit for the series circuit. We've built this one. Um, we've tested the battery voltage and the current, and you can talk about the brightness of the bulbs, kind of make up your own scale or say brighter, brighter, bright, brighter, brightest. Um, and we have measured the battery voltage and the current into the battery here as well and look at the brightness of the bulbs. Now it's time to build this third circuit with three light bulbs, each in a parallel circuit and one battery at 12 volts. Okay, in order to um, make this three bulb circuit look just like the schematic, I've set up each bulb with kind of its own arms here, and then the battery kind of has arms, and we'll just hook them up. Connect the wires between the arms here. So now I have my parallel circuit here. I can hit play, 
and those bulbs are pretty bright. Oh, let's make sure that we have a 12 volt battery here. Oop, we have 50. So let's measure the voltage across the battery. That's 12 volts. Put the voltmeter a little bit closer here. Let's measure the voltage across each bulb. It's about the same as the battery. For bulb one, same for bulb two, same for bulb three. So you can see that things are a little bit differently. Uh, the voltage is divided a little bit differently when you have a parallel circuit. Let's look at the current. My ammeter is kind of under the camera here. So when we have three parallel circuits, the, cu the current anywhere near the battery is 3.6. If we look towards the bulbs, it's 1.2. So that's kind of interesting. Things are going a little bit differently when we have a parallel circuit. The brightness of these two bulbs seems pretty the, the brightness of the bulbs in the three bulb parallel circuit versus the two bulb parallel circuit seems pretty, uh, pretty similar. So now it's time to answer some questions in part five. You've been able to fill out this table and let's summarize the relationships you observed and explain what you think is happening. If you change the battery voltage, does it cause you to modify any of your conclusions? So let's go change the battery voltage and see what happens. Um, if we take a wire out of the circuit, we'll have to see what happens then. And if we test the voltmeter and ammeter in different ways, we'll see if we get different results. So to answer those follow-up questions, we need to change the voltage in the battery. Uh, let's just up it to 20 and see if we... It's a lot brighter. Let's see what happens to the voltage in each bulb. 19.995, pretty close to the battery. Pretty close to the battery at bulb number two, and again, pretty darn close to the battery. So bulb one, two, and three are the same, even if you change the voltage of the battery, so that might help you make some conclusions here. And here is kind of a big thing in parallel circuits, one of the big advantages. Let's take a wire out. If you split a junction here, um, if you take a wire out, at least uh, each circuit is independent. So you still should have some bulbs running. Let's see if we can put this back. Let's take a wire out here. If a junction uh, kind of away from the battery is split, you can see that these two bulbs still work. Now most modern Christmas lights now are run on parallel circuits, so if one bulb goes, the whole thing doesn't just melt down and then you have to test every bulb. We can basically take this bulb out by splitting a junction. Let's say this bulb goes bad and no longer makes a con connection. Let's just kind of take that wire out so you can see. If this bulb burns out, these bulbs will still run. Um, another example of that is solar panels. If you have your solar panels hooked up in series, if you get some shade and part of the panels not uh, don't produce electricity, uh, you get less electricity in the whole circuit. But if you have your panels hooked up in parallel like this, um, even if one panel gets shaded out a little bit or part of one panel gets shaded out and it's hooked up in uh, parallel, the rest of the uh, voltage will not drop. So now let's 
test the ammeter and voltmeter. I've been putting the red on the bottom of the light bulb. Let's see what happens. Oh, we get backwards current. Same here. Get backwards current. We get minus on the voltmeter. Let's do the same with the battery. Let's switch around how we measure voltage on the battery. Oh, we get a negative. How about the ammeter? It doesn't really matter on this ammeter. It's a non-contact ammeter and I prefer to use this one. But if you use the other one, something different might happen. This uh, contact ammeter. So now you have everything you need to answer up to question 27, uh, part 6, and the rest of the lab will be in part, uh, part 2 of the video. Thanks so much for watching. Uh, finish up to part 5.